Today, we're going to look at the new G3 scale from Hornady and see if it's the right digital reloading scale for you. Today, we're going to check out accuracy, features, show how it works with trickling, and see if it can stand up as a substantial upgrade to the Generation 2 scale that it seems to be replacing. If you're at all like me, you might have thought at first that the only upgrade from the G2 to the G3 scale is the price, because the spec sheets are very similar. But I assure you during today's video, we're going to cover all the differences, and it is a bit of an upgrade. Today's video, we're going to show how accurate it is, show all of its settings on the scale, do some trickle testing, and run through a calibration. So without further ado, let's do the peel, and let's get started. It comes with a scale, a calibration weight, and a reasonable reloading pan. Some of the scales you're going to pick up these days don't come with one, but the G2 did, as well as the G3. Side by side, we can see that the G2 is slightly smaller than the G3, but the G3 has a slightly angled display to make it slightly easier to see. Both have the covers that extend completely over the entire unit. The covers are folding and don't detach from the units, so depending on your preference, that may be a positive or a negative. I also have a G1 scale here for a size comparison, but the closest comparison is going to be the Generation 2. Real quick, let's just run through the functions. We can switch units from grains, grams, ounces, carrots, and back to grains. Zero is obviously going to zero or tear our scale. By holding the calibration and holding the power button at the same time, we can get into the other menu. We can see that the battery symbol comes up, and this is actually a registration of how good the battery is. Three dashes is a full battery. The next setting is for backlight. We can set it to auto on and off. This can be set to on all the time, off all the time, or again, auto. The next menu is my favorite for the new scale and one of the best new features they've added. SLP, I can only assume stands for sleep, but this setting allows for 0, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, 120 seconds, 150 seconds, or 180 seconds of automatic turnoff. But 0 is my favorite option. If you leave it on here, it doesn't turn off, which was my biggest pet peeve with the Generation 2. But that's not the only thing they fixed. Moving on to the next scale, we can see it goes back to battery, and so we finished all of the options. Hitting the power button, we'll exit out of that menu, back to our measurement state. Now, I've already done it, but let's do a quick calibration just so you can see how it's done. If we hold the calibration button, we'll see it comes up to calibration. We can see now it's asking for a 10 gram weight. We'll apply our 10 gram weight to the scale. And we can see that it has measured 10 grams. If we leave it on there for a while, it doesn't really matter, but it's not going to tell us pass until we've actually lifted off the weight. After it's been removed, we can see that the scale says pass and we're back at zero again. Just like the G2, the Hornady G3 scale is good for a total weight of 1500 grains, and it's supposed to have a tenth of a grain accuracy at least up to 500 grains. Behind our scales, we can see I have my better scale. This is an FX120i. This is going to give us a measurement down to 0.02 grains, so we can validate all of our check weights with that scale as well. I have an entire video on a whole bunch of other scales that I have if you're interested in that, which I'll link at the end of the video, but we're just going to real quickly validate the accuracy of the scale. So we can see 5 grains, 7, we're reading 7.02, 9 is going to be 9.02, half a grain takes up to 9.52, one grain extra 10.52. Then we have our other weights, have additional 20 grains, take us to 30.52, an additional 10 should be 40.52. No, nope, now we're at 40.54, add another 20 grains, 60.54, add another 50, 110.54, our 100 grain weight. 210.54, we have another 200 grain weight, 410.56, so that should take us real close to our 500 grain limit. Let's see how the scale does. Since our scale here is only going to have tenth of a grain accuracy, but our error is stated as plus or minus 0.1 grains. So we're off with 5 grains, 7, 9, 10, 10 and a half, 20 and a half, 40 and a half, 90 and a half, 110 and a half, 
at our 100, 210 and a half at our 200 grain weight, 410 and a half. When we finally went to 410 grains, we are off by our error of 0.1 grains. That again is assuming that we haven't added a little bit of error with our weights. Overall, the G3 has been pretty spot on and anything below 100 grains that I've played with, I really haven't played with it a ton over that. It's always been right on, whereas like the G2 is usually pretty good, but for some reason, as you can see, when I put the 10 grain weight on there, around 10 grains, this thing likes to register high by a tenth of a grain, and this scale has literally always been this way. But again, it's always been within the accuracy that's stated. But our other G3 scale hasn't had that issue, and I've been able to go up and down with the weights on it quite significantly. So overall, really have nothing to complain about. The accuracy has been pretty good. The only thing I would say, if you're wanting a really, really snappy scale, this might not be the one for you. You can see if we just add a 20 grain weight, it just takes a couple seconds to get there. If you're going to be patient with it, it should work just fine. But let's look at trickling, because it's going to be interesting. For a trickling test, we're going to be using some CFE223. And typically, one of the hardest things for a scale to do is come off of zero. A lot of times, the software inside just wants to stay at zero. So trickling something slowly like CFE223, sometimes we might be able to get a little bit of error. So as we can see, trickling up from zero, going relatively slowly, we really aren't having a problem seeing the change. And if we go fast, we can see it does take a second to register the change. But overall, it seems to be going pretty good. But let's see, did, our, did we lose our zero? And there we have zero. So trickling up from absolutely nothing, we actually didn't lose our zero. So we'll, we'll calibrate on the same pan. We'll also zero on our FX120i. So again, we'll go real slow, see if we can get it, trick it off of zero. And we can see it comes right off of zero. Speed it up a little bit and let's see if we can trickle up to somewhere close to five grains and see what our accuracy is. So we've got our scale to register five grains. Oh, I don't know if our G2 lost zero, it's saying 4.7, but as you can see our FX120i 4.98, well within the five grains that it says it's going to be. We'll trickle it up a little further, so we're back at our 10 grains. We reserved our scale. Big shocker there, 10.1. Our FX120i says 10.02. So, right on the money. Trickle it up to 15 grains. Our generation 2 scale is going to say 15.1. Our FX120i, 15.02. Again, or 15 even. Right on the money. Trickle it up to 20 grains. Say our G2 is sitting at 20.02, but our FX120i again, 20.02 grains, right on the money. We trickle up slow, as soon as we got it, we're in perfect agreement. So overall, the Hornady has really followed the FX120i well, and for that person that wants to be able to trickle off a zero, if you're that guy, I think that you can. Even going slow on a fine powder like CFE223, if we want to trickle it up to two grains, put it on our FX120i, and there we are, 1.98. So, I don't know if you can complain about that. Overall, for the scale of all the flaws that the G2 has had for me, having its zero float, having to reset it all the time, it's been a very consistent scale for what I've worked with it so far, and it doesn't turn off every three minutes if you don't want it to. In fact, to turn it off, you actually have to hold the power button for a little while to get it to turn off. Overall, it is a little bit of a price increase since I've seen it anywhere between $50 and $60 on the retail market, if you can find it right now. Compared to where the G2, you could find it for around $40. It is a scale and works, but overall, the performance of the G3 has honestly been much better than the G2, in my opinion, and worth the 10 extra dollars. It comes, it's going to come with a reasonable reloading pan. So overall, you really can't complain. Backlight doesn't turn off, trickles from zero. I don't know what else you'd want a scale in this price category to do. If you're a follower of Johnny's Reloading Bench, his current scale recommendations are a true way marksman for the $50 price point, which this, in my opinion, competes with perfectly. 
It looks like this might be slightly less responsive for the display, but overall for the features that they come with, I think it's basically the same. The Trueway Lux, which is very similar to the Marksman, but I believe it does not come with a pan. So if you don't have one, you would need one. Again, G3 comes with its own. And the Bryfit that he's recommending, it's a little bit cheaper than that, $21 if you're looking to get into a cheaper scale, but also doesn't come with a pan, so you'd have to get that on your own. I'll link to all those in the description box. If you want to see my other scale video where I go through all my other scales in greater detail, I'll link that in the description box below. Overall, it's a little bit more expensive than I would like, but at least at this point is a solid improvement over the Generation 2 scale, even if it is $10 more. If you have any questions about the G3 scale, put that in the comment section below. Check out my other scale video here, and I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.